today we will uh, introduce special discrete distributions. Uh, these distributions are the ones which have been used quite frequently in practice and they arise in various natural phenomena. So, firstly let me start with binomial distribution. Now, in the binomial distribution, we are considering random experiments in which the outcomes can be described into two types of outcomes. One is called success and one is called failure. So, my sample space consists of two outcomes. Now, this type of situation arises for example, uh, let us consider a game of uh, target uh, hitting. So, at each trial we may hit the target or we may not hit the target. Suppose we are considering treatment of a disease, then for each patient, the patient may get cured or he may not get cured. A student appears in a qualifying examination, he may qualify or he may not qualify. In a game of uh, say tennis, at each hit of the ball by a player by the racket, the shot may be a winner or it may not be a winner. So, this type of situation then can describe a very large number of uh, random experiments, where we are finally interested only in success or failure. So, if we say that the experiments are conducted under independent and identical conditions, then the, uh, these are called independent and identically conducted Bernoullian trials. Bernoullian trials. So, suppose we say that n independent Bernoullian trials are performed under identical conditions. Let the probability of success in each trial be P. Okay. Now, let us consider the number of successes, the number of successes in n trials. Then what are the possible values that x can take? x can take values 0, 1, 2 and so on. So, what is the probability that say x is equal to r? Then we are having n trials out of this r of them are success. So, the probability of r successes will be p to the power r and then remaining n minus r will be failures. So, the probability of failure for each trial is 1 minus p. So, in n minus r trials it will be 1 minus p to the power n minus r. Now, out of this n trials any of the r trials can be success. So, this can be selected in n c r ways and therefore, the probability mass function of this random variable x is given by n c r p to the power r 1 minus p to the power n minus r. Here r can take values 0, 1 to n. So, if we follow our usual notation for the probability mass function, we will write it as p x r that is the probability that x is equal to r. Then x is called binomial random variable and this is called a binomial distribution. Now, these Bernoullian trials are named after the mathematician Bernoulli, James Bernoulli and because he was the first one who described this experiment. Uh, now, the name binomial distribution has come because of the use of the binomial coefficients and actually in order to evaluate that 
suppose we consider the sum of these probabilities then that is equal to sigma n c r p to the power r 1 minus p to the power n minus r r is equal to 0 to n then this is nothing but the sum of 1 minus p plus p to the power n and therefore this can be considered as 1 to the power n that is equal to 1 let us look at the properties of this binomial distribution in the last lecture i introduce various characteristic of a distribution for example mean of a distribution variance of a distribution or in general moments of a distribution so in the moments we had considered non central and central moments so based on that i had introduced the concept of a measure of symmetry or skewness and a measure of kurtosis that is the peakedness of a distribution now in the context of uh, these distributions i will calculate these characteristics and see how they uh, look like let us consider so mu 1 prime that is the mean or the expectation of this random variable so that will be equal to by definition r p x r r is equal to 0 to n that is equal to sigma r n c r p to the power r 1 minus p to the power n minus r r is equal to 0 to n now you can observe that corresponding to r is equal to 0 this term is actually 0 so basically this is starts from 1 we can write like that it is from 1 to n now what we do uh, we have noticed here that when we calculated the sum we actually interpreted this as a binomial sum so if we interpret this as a binomial sum then we should be able to interpret this part also as a binomial sum then only we can actually evaluate it so in order to do that we expand this factorial uh, this combination uh, term in the factorials n factorial divided by r factorial n minus r factorial p to the power r 1 minus p to the power n minus r r is equal to 1 to n now this r and r minus 1 you can adjust here so this we can write as n minus 1 factorial divided by r minus 1 factorial n minus r factorial p to the power r minus 1 1 minus p to the power n minus 1 minus r minus 1 so what i have done i have adjusted this r minus 1 here and then this term i have written n minus 1 factorial that means i have separated out n and i have also taken out p from here and this is from r is equal to 1 to n so if i substitute r minus 1 is equal to say s then this will become n p s is equal to 0 to n minus 1 n minus 1 c s p to the power s 1 minus p to the power n minus 1 minus s this is nothing but the binomial expansion of 1 minus p plus p to the power n minus 1 so this is again 1 and <coughs> we get it as equal to n p so the mean of a binomial random variable is n p now let us look at the physical interpretation of this in each trial the probability of success is p so in n trials the expected number of successes is n times p so that is justified here now in order to calculate higher order moments for example if i want to calculate the variance of this distribution i need expectation of x square now the way we have done the cal calculation for expectation of x we have actually split this combination term and cal cancelled out one of the terms in the factorials therefore it is beneficial if i calculate the so called factorial moments so let us look at expectation of x into x minus 1 so that is equal to sigma r into r minus 1 n c r p to the power r into 1 minus p to the power n minus r r is equal to 0 to n once again you notice here that corresponding to r is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1 this term will vanish so we can write it as r is equal to 2 to n n factorial divided by r minus 2 factorial 
n minus r factorial p to the power r 1 minus p to the power n minus r. So, if we follow a scheme similar to this, we can express it as n into n minus 1 p square sigma s is equal to 0 to n minus 2 n minus 2 c s p to the power s 1 minus p to the power n minus s. So, this is nothing but n into n minus 1 p square into 1 minus p plus p to the power n minus 2. Now, this term becomes 1. So, we get n into n minus 1 p square. So, this is expectation of x into x minus 1. Now, we can get mu 2 prime that is equal to expectation x square expressed as expectation of x into x minus 1 plus expectation of x because expectation x will cancel out here. Now, these two terms we have evaluated this is equal to n into n minus 1 p square and expectation x is equal to n p. So, we get the second non central moment of a binomial distribution. Now, this we can use to calculate the variance of the binomial distribution that is mu 2 that is variance of x and we have defined it as expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square. Now, this is equal to n into n minus 1 p square plus n p minus n square p square. So, here n square p square cancels out we are getting the term as n p into 1 minus p. Uh, in most of the practical applications we use the notation 1 minus p is equal to q. So, this is also written as n p q where q is defined as 1 minus p. Now, in a similar way we can calculate higher order moments for example, expectation x cube for that we will calculate the third factorial moment that is expectation x into x minus 1 into x minus 2 and so on. So, without getting into the technical details of this I will give the final expressions for this. We get mu 3 as equal to n p into 1 minus p into 1 minus 2 p and similarly the fourth central moment mu 4 turns out to be equal to 3 n p q square plus n p q into 1 minus 6 p q. Now, if we consider say beta 1 that is the measure of skewness that is mu 3 by see this notation we can also write sigma square for the variance then this is mu 3 by sigma cube or mu 3 divided by mu 2 to the power 3 by 2. So, that is equal to n p q into 1 minus 2 p divided by n p q to the power 3 by 2 that is equal to 1 minus 2 p divided by n p q to the power half. Now, note here that if p is equal to half then this is equal to 0 this is corresponding to symmetry that is the distribution is symmetric. It is less than 0 if p is greater than half that means, it is negatively skewed distribution. If it is greater than 0 p is less than half that is positively skewed. Let us look at the physical explanation for this. The probability mass function of the binomial distribution is n c r p to the power r 1 minus p to the power n minus r. Certainly, if p is equal to half, see p is equal to half, then you will get p x r is equal to simply n c r half to the power r that is equal to n c n minus r half to the power sorry half to the power n that is equal to p x n minus r. That means, the probability for x is equal to r and probability x equal to n minus r is same for r is equal to 0 1 to n. That means, the distribution is symmetric about the 
mid value here. It could be n by 2 or it could be mid value of n. There could be two middle points also. For example, we may have this situation. So, in the odd case, it is symmetric around this midpoint, and if it is even, then it is symmetric about the midpoint here. If p is greater than half, if p is greater than half, then your initial probabilities they will be. So, let us uh, write down some particular cases. Suppose I take n is equal to 3. So, 3 c r and uh, say p is equal to I take 3 by 4 or say 2 by 3. So, then this becomes 2 by 3 to the power r, 1 by 3 to the power 3 minus r. Now, corresponding to r is equal to 0, this value will become 1 by 3 cube. Then next value will become 3, 2 by 3 into 1 by 3 square then 3, 2 by 3 square, 1 by 3 and 2 by 3 cube. You can see here, this is for r is equal to 0, r is equal to 1, r is equal to 2 and r is equal to 3. So, you can notice here, the probabilities are, this 2 by 3 cube is much bigger than 1 by 3 cube. So, 1 by 3 cube is here, then 3 into, you are getting 6 by 27. So, that is somewhere here. Then next value is 3 into 4, 12 by 27 and then you are having 8 by 27. So, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, this distribution is, if you say try to join by a, this is negatively skewed. Similarly, if I take p less than half, if I take p less than half, Suppose, I take p is equal to say 1 by 4 and then let us write down and I take the case r is equal to say 4, sorry n is equal to 4. Then you will have r can take values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me write down the probabilities here. 4 c r 1 by 4 to the power r, 3 by 4 to the power 4 minus r. Now, corresponding to r is equal to 0, this will be 1 by 4 to the power 4. Corresponding to r is equal to 1, this will be 4, 1 by 4 cube, 3 by 4. Corresponding to r is equal to 2, this will be 4 c 2, that is 6, 1 by 4 square, 3 by 4 square. Corresponding to r is equal to 3, this will become 4, 1 by 4 into 3 by 4 cube. Corresponding to corresponding to r is equal to 4, this will become, uh, I think I made a mistake here, uh, corresponding to r is equal to 0, this will be 3 by 4 to the power 4, corresponding to r is equal to 1, this will be 4, 1 by 4, 3 by 4 cube, corresponding to r is equal to 2, it is 6 into 1 by 4 square, 3 by 4 square, corresponding to r is equal to 3, this is 4 into 1 by 4 cube, 3 by 4 and corresponding to r is equal to 4, this will become 1 by 4 to the power 4. So, if you plot these values here, r is equal to 0, you see, this is 3 by 4 to the power 4, that is 81 by 256. So, somewhere here, corresponding to r is equal to 1, you can see here the value is now 3 cube that is 27 into 4 that is 108 by 256. Corresponding to r is equal to 2 it is 54 by 256 that is it is coming down. Corresponding to 3 this is turning out to be 3 by 256. Corresponding to r is equal to 4 it is 1 by 256. So, it is there is a steep decline. So, this is positively skewed. So, this is confirmed from these calculations here. The exact that is if p is equal to 0, you have a symmetric distribution. If p is greater than half, the distribution is negatively skewed. If p is less than half, the distribution is 
positively skewed. We also look at mu 4 here, mu 4 is equal to 3 n p q square plus n p q into 1 minus 6 p q. This gives us the measure of kurtosis that is beta 2 that is equal to mu 4 by mu 2 square minus 3. So, that turns out to be 6 1 minus 6 p q divided by n p q. Naturally, this is equal to 0 if p q is equal to 1 by 6 it is less than 0 if p q is greater than 1 by 6, it is greater than 0 if p q is less than 1 by 6. Now, this is will give a quadratic inequality and therefore, you can solve that to get the range for negative and positive values. In the context of the characteristics of a distribution, there is one important function which is called the moment generating function of a distribution. So, moment generating function of a random variable x is defined as m x t that is equal to expectation of e to the power t x. Why is it called moment generating function? Because suppose this exists, then we can consider the expansion of this. in Maclaurin series and apply this expectation linearly, then you get t expectation x that is mu 1 prime plus t square by 2 factorial mu 2 prime plus t cube by 3 factorial mu 3 prime and so on. That means, the series that we are getting is an infinite power series in t with the coefficient of t to the power k by k factorial as the kth non central moment. And if I consider say rth derivative of the moment generating function at t equal to 0, that is the rth non central moment, that is why it is called the moment generating function of a random variable or MGF. It has some important properties, for example, a moment generating function uniquely determines a distribution. That means, two distribution different distributions will have different MGF and uh, it is also very useful in derivation of certain distributions. For example, if I have two random variables which are independent and if I am considering moment generating function of a sum, then it is equal to moment generating function of the product if x and y are independent random variables. Now, let us look at this in the context of the binomial distribution. For the binomial distribution, moment generating function that is equal to expectation e to the power t x that is equal to sigma e to the power t r n c r p to the power r into 1 minus p to the power n minus r, r is equal to 0 to n. This we can write as sigma n c r 1 minus p to the power n minus r p e to the power t to the power r, r is equal to 0 to n, which is nothing but the expansion of 1 minus p plus p e to the power t to the power n that is q plus p e to the power t to the power n. So, the moment generating function of a binomial distribution with parameters n and p can be written as q plus p e to the power t whole to the power n. See, if I say if x and y are independent binomial random variables, say x follows binomial m p and y follows binomial n p, then x plus y follows binomial m plus n p. 
this you can easily prove using the moment generating function. Now, in the Bernoullian trials, we can also look at in a different way. We introduce what is called a geometric distribution. Now, what is a geometric distribution? Suppose independent Bernoullian trials. are performed under identical conditions until the first success is observed. Let x denote the number of trials to get the first success. Then what is the probability of x is equal to say k? Now, the trials are performed and all of them are failure till the xth trial. So, if I am saying this is kth trial where the success is observed before that all of them are failures. That means, k minus 1 failures are there. So, you have q to the power k minus 1 into p, where k can take values 1, 2 and so on. So, this is the probability mass function of this distribution. This is known as the geometric distribution. The reason is that if I consider the sum q to the power k minus 1 p for k equal to 1 to infinity, this is nothing but the infinite geometric series that is equal to p by 1 minus q that is p by p that is equal to 1. Let us look at the mean of this that is equal to sigma k q to the power k minus 1 p k equal to 1 to infinity. Now, this is nothing but the infinite arithmetic geometric uh, series and the sum of this is simply p into 1 minus q to the power minus 2 that is equal to p divided by p square that is equal to 1 by p. That means, if in each trial the probability of success is p, then the number of trials expected number of trials needed for the first success will be 1 by p. So, it is something like if you consider a coin tossing experiment and in the coin tossing experiment, uh, if the coin is unbiased then the probability of head is half. So, expected number of trials needed to get the first head that will be 1 by half that will be equal to 2. That means, it, on the average 2 trials will be required to get the first head. Similarly, suppose I am considering a fair die and the probability of say observing is 6 for the first time. So, that will be 1 by 6. Now, what is the expected number of trials needed to get the first success? first time head is coming uh, sorry first time 6 is coming. So, that will become 1 by 1 by 6 that is equal to 6 that is on the average 6 trials will be required to get a particular face. Now, the moments of the geometric distribution can be calculated using this type of progressions. So, I will give the general formula for that actually if we consider say 1 minus say q to the power minus k plus 1 that is equal to sigma j c k q to the power j minus k for j is equal to k to infinity, which can also be expressed as i is equal to 0 to infinity k plus i c k q to the power i, where q is between minus 1 and 1. Here of course, uh, q will is between 0 to 1. Using this we can calculate the second moment. So, it turns out to be 1 plus q by p square and the variance will turn out to be q plus 1 by p square minus 1 by p square that is equal to q by p square. The moment generating function of 
geometric distribution is p e to the power t divided by 1 minus q e to the power t, where t is less than minus log of q. Now, here in the geometric distributions, we are conducting the Bernoullian trials till we get the first success. Now, in place of the first success, we need a specified number of success. Uh, it could be various kind of uh, experiments where, for example, you consider certain machinery which has several identical components which are part of that. And the machine will work if a specified number, suppose I say 5 of them are working. So, suppose total number of components are 10 or 15 etcetera and suppose 5 of them are working then the system works and uh, the system will fail if a specified number fails. So, for example, first time when 4 components fail or first time 2 components fail. So, in place of first uh, time success or first time failure, if we look at first time rth success or rth failure, this is a generalization of the geometric distribution and it is called negative binomial distribution. So, let me introduce this one. negative binomial distribution. <coughs> Consider independent Bernoullian trials performed under identical conditions till the rth success is achieved. So, let x denote the number of trials needed for this. Then what is the probability that x is equal to say k. Now, you see here the trials are getting performed and on the kth trial. So, this is first time rth success is observed. That means, before to this there are k minus 1 trials out of this k minus 1 trials r minus 1 success should be there. That means, this can be done in k minus 1 choose r minus 1 ways. So, now you have out of this k minus r failures will be there. So, q to the power k minus r and p to the power r because r successes are there where k can take values r, r plus 1 and so on. So, this is called negative binomial distribution. The mean of negative binomial distribution is r by p, the variance of negative binomial distribution is r q by p square, the moment generating function of negative binomial distribution is p e to the power t divided by 1 minus q e to the power t whole to the power r for t less than minus ln q. Now, if you notice here the moment generating function of geometric and moment generating function of the negative binomial this is power r of this. So, we can establish a relationship that if say x 1, x 2, x n are independent and identically distributed geometric random variables, then y that is equal to sigma x i, i is equal to 1 to n that will follow negative binomial n p distribution that is the sum of independent geometric random variables is a binomial negative binomial distribution. Now, it can be easily explained also from physical phenomena. If I am considering x 1 here, now x 1 is what? It is the number of trials needed for the first time 
a success is observed. X2 is also the number of trials needed for the first time a success is observed. Xn is the number of trials needed for the first time success. So, if I consider x1 plus x2 plus xn, what does it denote? It will represent the number of trials needed for the first time nth success is observed and therefore, this should be negative binomial because I am considering identical Bernoullian trials performed under uh, independently and therefore, this will become negative binomial random variable. Now, let me introduce another important discrete distribution that is known as Poisson distribution. So, we introduce what is called a Poisson process. So, when we observe certain phenomena such as the number of accidents occurring at a particular traffic junction over a period of time. Suppose, we observe the number of telephone calls recorded at a uh, telephone junction. Suppose, we uh, record the number of earthquakes in a geographical region over a period of time. Suppose, we observe the number of say astronomical events or say uh, a comet, the observing of a comet etcetera uh, in a space over a period of time. Many of these events satisfy certain assumptions. These assumptions are called assumptions of a Poisson process. So, first thing that we notice here that we are observing events over a period of time, over area, over space. Okay. So, for convenience we consider observations or occurrences over a period of time, area, space, etcetera. Okay. Uh, for convenience we will restrict our attention to time. So, we make the following assumptions. The first assumption is that the, the number of occurrences during disjoint time intervals are independent. Now, when we change the time to area, then over different geographical regions, they will be independent or if we are observing over space, then over the different regions of space, they will be independent. So, when we say time, so it means that suppose we are observing number of traffic accidents occurring. So, if we consider say time between 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock and we consider a time between 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock then the number of accidents observed during 11 to 12 or 4 to 5, they will be independent. Suppose, we are observing say a phenomena such as earthquake, then the number of earthquake occurring over say Asian region may be independent of the number of earthquakes occurring over say uh, European region etcetera. The probability of a single occurrence during a small time interval is proportional to the length of the interval. Once again, if in, uh, we replace the time by area, then it will be proportional to the area of that region. If we replace it by region in the space, then it will be proportional to the volume of that uh, region, etcetera. And the third assumption is that the probability of 
more than one occurrence during a small time interval is negligible that means more than one occurrence during a small time interval is negligible or it is very very small or it can be ignored let me introduce some notation uh, to express this so let us use the notation say p n t now if i denote x t to be the random variable that is the number of occurrences in interval say 0 to t we have kept uh, intentionally one side open and one side closed so this means interval of length t if we are making the assumption of the stationarity that is the independent intervals then 0 to t is the same as a to a plus t or from any point if I am starting and if I am considering the length t then it is same. So, we can consider without loss of general t 0 to t. Then we use the notation p and t that probability of x t is equal to n. That means, in the interval of length t there are n occurrences that is the probability of n occurrences in an interval of length t. Now, in the framework of this p and t notation, we can express these assumptions the probability of a single occurrence during a small time interval. Single occurrence then means p 1 and that is small thing we may use the notation h that means one occurrence in an interval of length h is proportional to the length of the interval. So, proportional means we can use the notation alpha h that is the constant of proportionality is taken to be alpha. Similarly, probability of more than one occurrence. Now, more than one occurrence means probability of x t is greater than 1 that can be written as 1 minus probability of x t is uh, less uh, it is actually equal to 0 uh, more than one occurrence yeah more than one occurrence is uh, greater than 1. So, this is less than or equal to 1 that is equal to 1 minus p 1 0 and p 1 1 this is negligible. Now, for negligibility we use a notation and uh, again we are considering a small time interval. So, x h x h so p 1 h p 0 h etcetera that is equal to I am assuming negligible. So, we are using a small o notation here that it is equal to o h and here also we may introduce o h here. So, these are the assumptions that we are having 1 minus p naught h minus p 1 h is negligible and p 1 h is equal to alpha h and we have just added a negligible amount here uh, it will not make any difference to this. So, under assumptions 1 to 3 p and t is equal to alpha t to the power n e to the power minus alpha t by n factorial n is equal to 0 1 2 3. that is the number of occurrences in a Poisson process. So, this the occurrences which satisfy these assumptions they are called occurrences in a Poisson process and the entire phenomena is called a Poisson process and we are deriving the distribution of the number of occurrences in a Poisson process as alpha t to the power n e to the power minus alpha t by n factorial. What is alpha here? Alpha is the constant of proportionality that we have assumed here. Let me give a proof of this. We start with the 0, let us consider say p 0 t plus h. Now, p 0 t plus h means no occurrence in the interval 0 to t plus h. 
Now, this we can write as now let us consider on the scale suppose this is t 0 this is t and t plus h is here. If I say that there is no occurrence in 0 to t plus h this means that there is no occurrence in 0 to t and there is no occurrence in t to t plus h that means we can say it is no occurrence in 0 to t and so we can write it as event intersection no occurrence in t to t plus h. Now, if we look at these intervals, this interval is disjoint from this interval using the first assumption these two events are independent. So, we can write it as probability of no occurrence in 0 to t into probability of no occurrence in t to t plus h. Now, this is p 0 t and this is an interval of length h the starting point may be t, but the length is so we can use the notation p 0 h. Now, p 0 h we have expression here 1 minus p 0 h minus p 1 h is equal to o h and p 1 h is alpha h plus o h. So, if we substitute here we get p 0 h is equal to 1 minus alpha h minus o h. 2 times o h is same as writing once. So, this is equal to p naught t 1 minus alpha h minus o h. So, we can write it as p 0 t plus h minus p 0 t divided by h that is equal to minus alpha p 0 t minus o h by h p 0 in this one if we take the limit as h tending to 0 taking limit as h tends to 0 we get p 0 prime t is equal to minus alpha p 0 t. This is nothing but a first order differential equation which is just uh, like a variable separable. So, if we simplify this you get p 0 t is equal to minus uh, a constant times e to the power minus alpha t. Now, this constant can be determined by the initial condition that p 0 0 is equal to 1. So, if we substitute this here you get c is equal to 1. So, the solution <coughs> is equal to p 0 t is equal to e to the power minus alpha t. Now, if we look at this expression here p and t here if we put n is equal to 0 we get e to the power minus alpha t. That means, we have proved this statement for n is equal to 0. Now, in a similar way we can prove for 1 and then so on. If we consider say p 1 t plus h that is equal to probability of single occurrence in the interval 0 to t plus h. Once again let us look at this interval if we say from 0 to t plus the h there is one occurrence then that one occurrence can be in 0 to t or it could be from t to t plus h. So, we can split this event as probability of single occurrence in 0 to t and no occurrence in t to t plus h plus probability of no occurrence in 0 to t and single occurrence in t to t plus h. Once again we can use the independence and we get it as p 1 t p 0 h plus p 0 t p 1 h that is equal to now, p 1 t and then p 0 h we have calculated as 1 minus alpha h minus o h plus p 0 t value we have already evaluated e to the power minus alpha t p 1 h is alpha h plus o h. So, from here I can again set up the differential equation p 1 t plus h minus p 1 t divided by h that is equal to minus alpha 
p 1 t plus alpha e to the power minus alpha t minus o h p 1 t plus o h e to the power minus alpha t. So, if I take h tending to 0, we get here p 1 prime t is equal to minus alpha p 1 t plus alpha e to the power minus alpha t. This is nothing but a first order linear differential equation. So, we can solve it easily and the solution turns out to be p 1 t is equal to lambda t e, uh, alpha t e to the power minus alpha t plus a constant. Now, once again we can use the initial condition p 1 0 that is the probability of a single occurrence in the interval of length 0 that will be 0. If we substitute this, we will get c 1 is equal to 0. So, this means p 1 t is equal to alpha t e to the power minus alpha t. Now, once again if we <coughs> note here the general expression that we wanted to prove here, in this one if we put n is equal to 1, we get p 1 t is equal to alpha t into e to the power minus alpha t. So, we have proved this statement for n is equal to 1 also. So, assuming the statement for n is equal to k, we can prove for n is equal to k plus 1. So, this result is proved. So, now in uh, practice generally what we do, we can substitute this uh, alpha t as some lambda and uh, we can write down the expression for the distribution as putting alpha t is equal to lambda, we write the distribution probability x equal to k is equal to e to the power minus lambda, lambda to the power k by k factorial for k equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. So, in popularly this is known as the Poisson distribution that is the distribution of the number of occurrences in a Poisson process and when we are considering the interval of length t and we multiply that alpha into t, then that gives the value lambda. So, this is called the Poisson distribution. Now, we just give the expressions for the mean, variance etcetera. The mean of a Poisson process is equal to the parameter lambda here, mu 2 prime is equal to lambda square plus lambda and therefore, mu 2 that is the variance is again lambda. So, in a Poisson distribution mean and variance are same. Similarly, if we calculate the third moment that is also lambda, the fourth moment is lambda plus 3 lambda square. The moment generating function of a Poisson distribution is lambda e to the power lambda e to the power t minus 1. If we look at the behavior of this distribution here, see if we consider say beta 1 that will be equal to lambda by lambda to the power 3 by 2 that is equal to 1 by lambda to the power half, this is positive. So, the Poisson distribution is somewhat positively skewed. Actually, as lambda increases, the probabilities converge towards 0. So, this is a positively skewed distribution. Let me give one example here. the average number of typos in a large book is 300. What is the probability that not more than two errors will be found in randomly selected 1 percent of the pages.
let us look at the solution of this. So, let us consider x to be the number of typos. Okay. So, x follows Poisson distribution with parameter 300. Now, y is the number of defects in 1 percent of the pages. So, y will follow Poisson 3. Now, we want probability of y less than or equal to 2 that is equal to e to the power minus 3, 3 to the power k by k factorial sigma k equal to 0 to 2 that is equal to e to the power minus 3, 3. So, when we put k equal to 0, I get e to the power minus 3. For k equal to 1, I will get 3 e to the power minus 3. For k equal to 2, I will get 4.5 e to the power minus 3 that is equal to 8.5 e to the power minus 3 that is equal to 0.4232. So, we can evaluate by applying the assumptions of the Poisson process here. That means, we are assuming that the number of typographical errors uh, in different pages or different areas of the book they are independent. The probability of a typo in a small portion is proportional to the length of or the area of that space of that uh, page and similarly, the uh, probability of more than one typo in a small area is negligible. Under that assumption, the Poisson process model can be applied here and we can calculate this probability easily. So, we have uh, discussed important discrete probability distributions today. Uh, in fact, there are many more, but uh, uh, that one can refer to for example, hypergeometric distribution, there is a discrete uniform distribution and so on and then there is a broad class of distributions called power series distributions. So, one can look at those distributions. In the following lecture, I will be discussing special continuous distributions.